Hello everyone, my name is Jacob Brown and today I'm going to be presenting the work I've done with Professor Yin Pan on integrating GUR rapid response with Greylog extended log format. Our agenda for today is to start with an introduction of a few tools, mainly that's going to be GUR and Greylog. Also we're going to introduce what is GALF. Next we're going to move on to the motivation for our work. Uh, after this we'll talk about our solution uh, and our design and implementation. Following that, we're going to talk about some examples about how our work can be used and why our work is useful. And then finally, we're going to conclude and offer some future work and answer any questions you may have. To start, I will introduce GUR. At this point in time, it is very common for multiple corporate devices to be spread across different geographic regions, which gives rise to remote live forensics. Remote live forensics refers to the collection and examination of a computer over a live network connection, including the computer's live volatile data, stored data, and data in transit. This is much preferable when managing many devices over many different geographic regions to typical forensics where you have to print a computer into a lab, image it, and index it. To assist with this, Google developed a tool called GUR Rapid Response. GUR is a Python-based open source remote live forensics framework, which uses a client-server model for its design. This means that from the master server, you can query clients for different information. To do that, uh, GUR uses what are called flows. Different examples of flows are network-based flows where you can query for network connections currently uh, established on the client. Also, you can query for live processes currently running on the client. And finally, where applicable, you can even query to see if registry keys exist on the client or certain files exist on the client. When you want to run a flow over multiple clients, GUR uh, uses what are called hunts. And then finally, when that data is returned from clients, you can use what's called a output plugin to send that data off somewhere else. Next, let's talk about Greylog. Greylog is an open source centralized log management solution with a backend of Elasticsearch, MongoDB, and the Greylog server. Because Greylog has a backend of Elasticsearch, it does a very good job at indexing large amounts of data very quickly. And also because of the open source nature of Greylog, there are very affordable options, even free options available. GELF stands for the Greylog Extended Log Format, and it is a log format created by Greylog and it aims to overcome the limitations of classic syslog. These limitations include limitations on payload size, lack of data types, differences in syslog implementations between different RFCs, different platforms, and lack of compression, among other things. GELF is supported by many logging systems, but namely Gramlog, and payloads are formatted in JSON. If you look to your right, the image with the green background is an example of a valid GALF payload. So in this payload, we have certain fields that are required, such as version, host, short, full meshes, timestamp. And at the bottom of that payload, we see different fields prepended with an underscore. This makes it very extendable where you can add any field you want to the GALF payload and Greylog will index it. The motivation for our work comes from the fact that GUR's output plugins are somewhat limited. Uh, there are two types of plugins. First are plugins that support sending data directly to another platform. The most popular of these is definitely BigQuery and Splunk. Both of these are enterprise ready solutions that allow you to index and visualize large amounts of data. However, for certain small to mid-sized companies, they may not be an affordable option. The last option for these types of plugins are is email, but obviously email is not going to be a manageable or scalable solution. Next, there are plugins that allow you to download data in certain formats such as CSV, YAML, or SQLite scripts. But again, this is not going to be a scalable solution because if you imagine a scenario where you have a thousand servers sending back data, downloading all of them and parsing all that data manually is going to be um, not feasible. Our solution is to create another output plugin that integrates GUR with a GALF input. This output plugin is going to take data returned back from GUR clients, format it to, be, to meet the GALF spec, and then send it off to a remote host uh, 
configured in a config file for GUR. Also, we plan to merge our code into the GUR code base hosted on GitHub, so anyone is free to use it. And the benefits of this plugin, especially compared to not using a plugin at all, is that you are now able to manage data from a large number of hosts. Think again about that example where a thousand servers are reporting back data to the master. Now we can take all that data, send it off to a tool running GELF, in our example, it's going to be Greylog. And now we can index and graph that data to better understand it. Uh, additionally, if you already have a GELF input running somewhere or a tool that supports running a GELF input, now um, it'll be very easy to send GUR data to that input. Finally, if BigQuery and Splunk are not options for a certain organization, they're able to use this plugin and use something like Greylog for uh, cost savings reasons. Moving on to the design and implementation of our solution, if you look at the diagram to the right, you'll see how data is passed from the GUR client eventually all the way to our GALF input. So to start, a GUR worker is gonna request information from the client, and when the client responds with that information, the worker then sends that response to the GALF output plugin. And all output plugins are configured to accept data in a function called process responses. So in the GALF output plugin, process responses takes in this data and sends it to another function called make payload. This function is going to be used to format the data coming back from the client into properly formatted GALF. And once process responses gathers those GALF payloads, it's going to send it to a, another function called send payloads, which will eventually send it off to a GALF input uh, located on a remote host. And in our example, it's going to be a Greylog server. This GALF input will then forward that data to the Greylog server component where we can start to index and search it. Next, I'll give two examples where I show how our output plugin may be used in a forensic investigation process and may greatly aid a forensic investigator. So in our first example, we have a GUR server and a Greylock server running locally on a machine. And they, we have three GUR clients, all Windows 10 machines. In this scenario, we envision some sort of malware being spread across a domain or across a, an environment. And that malware leaving some trace of itself in the registry. In our example, I just created a simple registry key called malware with it a with data of you've been infected. We're gonna use GUR to pull all Windows clients for this registry key. With that in mind, let's take a look at what GUR can do in a live environment. So I've set up a few virtual machines for this demo. Uh, I have three Windows 10 virtual machines and all three of these each have a malware registry key set. You can see that here, here, and here. And then also on my developer machine, I have both GUR and Greylog running locally. So first, let's take a look at GUR. Uh, this will actually be the home screen you see of GUR when you first log in. And then if you click up here, it'll show you a list of clients that are currently connected. Uh, we see some are Windows machines, some are not. And also in this search box, you can enter, you can narrow down your search of what clients you want to see. Next, let's take a look at hunts. And we're going to create a new hunt to try to find this reg registry key in our Windows systems. So we're going to use the registry finder flow. And this will return um, data if it finds something and won't return data if it does not find something. Okay, we're going to click next, next. And then we're going to add the GALF output plugin as our output plugin. And we're going to um, add a rule that we want to match all Windows machines. So these rules specify um, which machines you want to run this hunt on. Okay, and we'll see a little summary here. And we're going to create the hunt. Okay, so now we have this hunt created. And I'm going to go ahead and start it to start that flow on all Windows machines. Next, we'll take a look at Greylog. Greylog, um, as we said earlier, is a centralized logging system. And its home screen will look something like this. In Greylog, you can specify different inputs. 
so that um, different systems can send the Greylog server information. I of course specified a GELF input, so we're looking, we'll be looking for GELF payloads. If we click on show received messages, we're going to see all the messages that have been sent to, sent to this GELF input. I've run this a few times, so we'll see a few messages in here. When we expand one of these, one of these messages, and I'll have to expand this a little bit to do that, we see that there are different there are different fields that the GELF um, payload registers. So Greylog parses these specific fields. And if we look back in GER under the results of the flow, we'll see very similar fields. So we see a path spec, we see a registry type. And if we go back to Greylog, we see that all those fields are being uh, keyed on in in Greylog, so now we can search for values of those fields, so we can filter messages based on those fields. Okay, so now we're going to take a look at a configuration I made, and let's make this a little smaller again, so I won't be in the way. Okay. Also, we're going to set to update every one second, so whenever it gets new messages, it'll they'll be displayed here. And now we can narrow our search down to just uh, Windows machines that have a certain value in the pathsec path field. So this pathsec path is going to specify it's going to look it's going to specify if there was a registry key that was found, it's going to specify the path here. And what I'm doing here is I'm searching for any message that has a path set path, path set path where malware, the string malware is in that path. So as we see, we, we have one there. Also, if we scroll down, we're able to see, oh, and we filter on, um, let's say the last 15 minutes. We're able to see how many clients responded to that, um, to that request by the master server, how many clients responded with data. So these are the clients that responded according to this search path and in this time frame. So now what we can do is we can run this hunt again and again and a forensic investigator can see, okay, how many clients do I have that have been, that have been infected with this malware or at least have this registry key set. So if we go back to one of the clients and let's delete the registry key. And then if we go back to GER and make a new hunt, <laughs> same way we did last time, we're going to see that only two respond this time, giving a forensic investigator a, uh, a nice graph of what's going on. You can see how this would be much preferable to doing this process manually if you couldn't afford those nice plugins with Splunk and um, BigQuery. With this plugin, we're able to automatically send data over and see how many have clients have been affected at one time. That will conclude example one. Now let's look at example two I have for today. So example two, the experiment setup is very similar. We're going to have a GUR server, Greylog server running locally. And this time we're going to have three GUR clients, each running Ubuntu 1804. Uh, the scenario I was imagining here was something like uh, there's been an external attack and you're looking at your servers to see if any servers have, uh, we could detect any remote shells on any servers. But the idea is that if there's any servers that are making a bash connection going outwards, that's something we may want to look at. So we're going to use the GUR netstat flow to determine how many machines have a bash connection to an external network. To do this, I have a Kali virtual machine running a few netcat listeners on different ports. And then I have a few Ubuntu machines that have connected to these ports to simulate something like a reverse shell. So let's create another hunt in GUR 
In this hunt, we're going to use the netstat flow. We're going to, of course, specify our GELF output plugin. And we're going to match on all Linux machines. So we want this hunt only to run on Linux machines. Okay, let's create the hunt. And let's update it. Well, let's start it, excuse me. Now, if we go over to Greylog, you can see I've already ran this hunt a few times and different machines report it back as infected. And if we take a dive into this um, payload, we see again the different fields that we would see in GUR under the results. Also, we can look at the graph of all the uh, messages we've gotten back. Let's set this to update. And we see we can get a very nice picture of what's been happening in our environment and maybe what devices we should check out. This concludes my final example. So in conclusion, our work integrated two very powerful tools, GUR and Greylock. GUR specializes in gathering data from a large amount of clients in a very scalable way, and Greylog specializes in indexing, searching, and graphing that data that you get back. This plugin will work for other logging tools such as Elasticstack. Any logging tool that has a GELF plugin available, this will work with. Uh, this greatly speeds up an investigative process. Uh, going through that GUR, those GUR results manually would be unfeasible for a large environment. This makes it feasible. Also, this enables a company to set up a, a SOC at a minimal cost. Finally, uh, some limitations for this work would be, obviously it only supports GELF over HTTP. And for future work, um, maybe to develop more output plugins to support more formats, such as syslog. If you have any questions, feel free to direct them to either one of these emails or ask them now. Thank you.